I forgot swinging, like, sexual swinging existed. <laughs> It's been a bad week if you don't like Spider-Man, but it has been a good week if you do like Spider-Man. Welcome to the It's Friday Tomorrow Show, the show that goes out every single week on the day before Friday. Thursday. My name's Mike. And I'm Jake. So has it been a good week or a bad week for you, Mike? Uh, it's actually been very good. I've been looking forward to Spider-Man for a long time. Yeah, there's a lot of swinging talk on the internet. Yeah. I'm <laughs> talking about the web-slinging type. Uh, <laughs> no, every, no, it's no joke though. It really is. Everyone who starts a video about Spider-Man is like, oh, but hey, yeah. hey, what's the swinging like? Swinging into it's action. Good. It's good, apparently. Slinging, there's lots of it. Um, I forget if anything else happens in the game. Yeah, there's S actually like fighting and sneaking and yeah. towers. There's towers in it. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. But they're called Stark Towers, right? And everyone's okay with that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, the Avengers they're Tower. Actually, yeah, I don't so. know what they're called. But there's towers. There's Ubisoft Towers and Spider-Man. Anyway, let's just run the... Do the voiceover bit. Go on. Spider-Man is the new PS4 exclusive from Insomniac Games that lets you play as Spider-Man. Unsurprisingly, it's an open-world action-adventure game set in New York that allows you to fight, sneak, and swing around as Spidey himself. And the swing bit is important because not only is everyone who's played it saying it's flipping great, but it's also a pretty unique thing within gaming terms and within superhero terms too. There's a real distinctiveness to how Spider-Man moves around, and this is the game that will let you experience that in gameplay. The web swinging is controlled mainly with the R2 button, and you can control and change direction mid-swing, run on walls, and launch yourself forward. Your web does actually latch onto buildings, lampposts, trees, and whatnot, and Insomniac's animation team have put a lot of detail into the way Spidey moves, so there's a constant sense of momentum. You can even do little tricks like this. Show off. Combat is obviously Arkham inspired, you can tell that just by looking at any single frame of it, but with the added speed, acrobatics and uh, uh, spider webs of Spider-Man. And where Batman is a powerful, almost statuesque fighter, Spidey is a lot more nimble, bouncing about the place like a little pinball. Stealth plays a role too, again, a bit like Batman Arkham. There are opportunities to pick off your enemies one by one and even sling some web to cause a distraction. You can even catch them and get them all webbed up, like Bilbo Baggins at the end of Harry Potter. Insomniac Games are one of PlayStation's longest standing, most successful studios. These guys made Spyro the Dragon, Ratchet and Clank, and the Resistance FPS series. Their most recent games were the well reviewed Sunset Overdrive for the Xbox and the incredibly well polished and colourful Ratchet and Clank remake on the PS4. What I'm saying is, these guys do know how to make a good video game. The review embargo lifted on Tuesday ahead of the game's release on Thursday, and critics have been pretty happy with it. It's currently got an 88 on to critic at the time of recording. It should take about 20 hours to beat the game and there's already some DLC planned for release on October the 23rd. The Heist DLC, as it's called, will be the first of three chunks of the City That Never Sleeps expansion. Look at that mate, the game's only just coming out and here we are telling you about the DLC. Stay at that. So that was one bit of voiceover and there's another bit of voiceover about Spider-Man coming very soon because Jake has played a lot of Spider-Man this week, or, mm. or so he tells me. Jake? Well, <laughs> about that. I have been playing Spider-Man. I knew it. 2000. So there I was, enjoying some time at North Wales' premier Owl Sanctuary. And then it hit me. Hang on, I said to myself. Haven't I played a Spider-Man game before? Turns out I had. Ages ago. Can you remember this? Probably. It's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater by these guys, Neversoft. Neversoft went on to make a bunch of well popular games before being shelved by Activision in 2014. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Guitar Hero and Spider-Man. This Spider-Man game was released in September 2000 on PlayStation and actually used the same game engine as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater but I bet you can't tell. In this game Spider-Man is trying to save New York from a weird fog that's just appeared and has been turning people into these pink blobby things called the symbiote and he's also been framed for an attack on Otto Octavius which isn't helping his reputation so no one really wants to help help him and that's about it as far as the story goes. It got really good reviews at the time but returning to it now after 18 years was still pretty fun actually. It's not as smooth to control as you'd like for a Spider-Man game and even games of the time had better controls than this. Agility is probably the most important non-web related Spider-Man ability and most of the levels box you up into corridors, vents, cubicle spaces. The camera ends up getting pretty tricky and I actually was on the ceiling half the time just to get a clear view of what was going on. But the outdoor sections are definitely the most fun as you'd expect from a game about slinging webs right? You zip from building to building in this really satisfying way and you almost forget about this weird fog below you. Stan Lee himself narrates part of the game and the villain's roster is huge. Important for a superhero game I reckon, there's Scorpio, Rhino, 
Doc Ock, Venom, Mysterio, Carnage. But luckily for Spider-Man, Daredevil, Black Cat, the Human Torch, the Punisher, and even Captain America make appearances. Like, it's absolutely nothing. They really got everyone on board for this, something that I don't think the new Spider-Man's going to be able to do. With one whiff of Tony Stark in this game, everyone's going to be writing articles like, Oh, I can't wait to get the new Iron Man game. Video games have come a long way since the 2000 Spider-Man, and reminding myself how fun it is to swing from building to building and cross these huge distances has got me pretty excited for the new game, actually. Something I wasn't feeling until I play this. We know the graphics are going to be better, we know the combat's going to be better and more responsive, but after playing this shit right here, yeah, I hope the new Spider-Man's got half as many bad guys, half as many nice cameos, and the story rolls up nicely. The bar's set, and it's quite high to be honest. I give Spider-Man 9 Uncle Ben's out of 10. Cheers. Well, that wasn't quite quite the Spidey game, but it was it was a Spidey game. It was, at the time, the Spidey game. The thing is, though, Think like... about that. <laughs> you know, like, how they, they did Prey again and stuff? They're, like, remaking and, like, just just scrubbing over the history by just calling yeah. this one Spider-Man. So now if you Google the game called Spider-Man, you know what I mean? Like, the artist formerly known as Prince. The game... This is now the game formerly known as Spider-Man. Yeah. Because Spider-Man 2018 is Spider-Man. Well, it's already happened uh, this year with God of War, and it happened in 2016 with Doom, and everyone's just doing it now. It just doesn't matter that there is already a game called Doom. Let's just call this one Doom again, because it'll be that good, no one gives exactly. a shit. Exactly. But this game was, like, really popular at the time. Yeah. Prey wasn't. Do you know what I mean? But this one was. Some... Prey was all right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I take, I take your point. <laughs> It was, yeah. So Spider-Man 2000 made by Neversoft on the yeah. Tony Hawk's engine, like I said in that voiceover then, did really well at the time. And this was before Marvel was a huge thing. Like, I think the, the rise of that was, like, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, which came out... Well, in the cinema, at least, yeah. This, it, was, it wasn't yeah. really anything. So when they had, like, Captain America and Daredevil and Human Touch, you know, it wasn't, like, a huge thing. Now, there's people already talking about all the Easter eggs in the new Spider-Man game, but... Yeah, back then it was just like, comic books hadn't blown up quite as much and Spider-Man was one of the big ones because yeah. it had a cartoon, so the, the game was like really good and it came out of left field, like Neversoft were making Tony Hawk, Pro Skater, and then they announced the second one, then this came out, yeah. and then they carried on making skateboarding games. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it was really good and at the time you weren't expecting much because, you know, Spider-Man wasn't as highly anticipated as it is this time, Spider-Man mm. 2018, yeah. I, uh, I actually love this. I, I remember... Um playing it on a demo disc as well I think it was actually yeah. a demo that I played first and then, and then I just got it on you know, like PS1 and it was uh, yeah it was just it was just a lot of fun I and mean, it was like I wasn't I, was, I always used to love Spider-Man as a kid and Spider-Man was like my superhero as a yeah, kid it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't Batman or, or Superman or anything it was it was Spider-Man when I was a young lad and it was like I just said uh, young lad and um, I was I was properly a fan of this game and I really enjoyed yeah. it and then the one that I really loved though was the one on PS2 which was it wasn't like based on the movie, but the movie, the Sam Raimi movie Spider-Man 2 was right. so successful, and Spider-Man 1 really, but Spider-Man 2, um, they put the branding of the movie on it. Yeah, and I And they put I remember, like the, yeah. the same like font and everything. Ah oh, man, it was so good. It was like, it was basically like the, the premise of what mm. the, this current Spider-Man 1 is. It's like exactly the same, like swinging and there's like little jobs and stuff. It's like web the, the, the forerunner. It's web, web swinging, again, isn't it? Swinging like, pss, pss, like you know, yeah. that's a web from rooftops. That yeah. was a web noise. Um, Damn. There's about thirty Spider-Man games. I was gonna do a history of Spider-Man. Yeah, there's genuinely like thirty. They go all the way from Commodore 64, oh, man. PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation had like three of them. PS2 had like six, and there's been loads of like 3DS, yeah. Game Boy ones, yeah. and you know they were all pretty different. So there's an absolute ton of them. I was gonna do a history of the main ones, but like every Seven other news yeah, every single article on the internet last week was about this. So yeah, the PS2's dead. It's happened, everyone. Sony finally ended. Aftercare support for the PS2 it means no more getting fixed, no more repairs, no more refurbishment. That's it. If it's gone, it's gone, and there's nothing we can do about it. So that's it, folks. It looks like the PlayStation 2 hasn't got much time left. Earlier this week, Sony Japan announced they were officially ending aftercare support for the PlayStation 2 after 18 years. Sony actually stopped manufacturing PS2 consoles in 2012, but Sony Japan provided a refurbishing service for customers, keeping the PS2 alive just a little bit longer. But this week, news outlet IT Media reported Sony Japan had asked PS2 owners to fill out a form 
by the 31st of August if they wanted to have their PS2 serviced one last time. You see, Sony Japan ended customer support for the PS2 on the 31st of August, and any customer who did not register by this deadline will not be eligible for repairs. Any PS2 console that arrives at the PlayStation Clinic Service Centre after September 7th will sadly not be serviced. And Sony warn even if customers do send their PS2 in for one last service, they may not be able to fix any faults they find due to a dwindling inventory of spare parts. But don't let the news get you down. Let's take a look back at the PS2, which lived a long, happy life and is leaving behind a legacy other consoles could only dream of. Developed as a successor to the PS1, the PS2 was released worldwide in 2000 and wowed everyone with its, at the time, cutting edge visuals and next gen gameplay. Sony advertised the PS2 as being completely different to anything else on the market, pitching the console as not only a cutting edge gaming device, but as a gateway to another dimension. The company hired famed surrealist filmmaker David Lynch to direct an ad for the PS2, which showed a man entering this so called third place which could only be accessed through a PS2. Over the years, the PS2 went through many different hardware revisions, most notably the PS2 Slimline Edition which was released in 2004. The PS2 also has the distinction of being the best selling console ever made, shifting over 158 million units worldwide. The only other console to ever come close to the PS2 sales was the Nintendo DS, which sold around 154 million units as of April 2017. So why was the PS2 so successful? Well, it was affordable, it had arguably one of the best game libraries out of any console ever, and believe it or not, some people bought one just because it happened to be one of the cheaper DVD players you could get at the time. But shifting focus back to the games, there was over 3,874 games produced for the PS2 during its lifetime, with the last game ever released for the console being Pro Evo Soccer 2014. More than 1.5 billion games were sold over the 13 years the console was available at retail, with GTA San Andreas being the biggest seller, shifting a whopping 17.33 million copies. The PS2 was home to all sorts of amazing games, many of which are considered some of the greatest games ever made. Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, Resident Evil 4, Final Fantasy X, Okami, Ratchet & Clank, Jack & Daxter, Silent Hill 2, there's just too many damn good games to fit into one video. So after 18 years, it's safe to say the PS2 has secured its place in gaming history as one of, if not the best console of all time, and deservedly so. So with this news that Sony Japan are officially ending customer support for the PS2, it's kind of like the final nail in the coffin. So rest easy PS2, you will be missed. Uh, well, thanks for watching the very first It's Friday Tomorrow show. Yep. Join us again next week when we will be talking about probably Tomb Raider, definitely not Spider-Man, and probably, hopefully, no, no more eulogies. No eulogies next time. Yeah. Bye! Bye.